Welcome to Living in America. I'm your host, Robert Gorski, and this show is one of a series that we're doing in honor of the 25th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Most of us think of the act as being something that involves uh, restaurants, curb ramps, elevator buttons, braille, and things like that, which help include uh, people with disabilities in all aspects of society. And the Americans with Disabilities Act has been very successful in that regard. And the spirit behind this, the act uh, is to include people with disabilities in all aspects of society and create a win-win situation, which in most cases has been occurring. However, we're going to talk uh, in this program about one area of society where inclusion has created some problems that people with uh, disabilities who are students, their parents, and school educators need to work together to resolve. The subject for tonight's discussion is bullying of students with disabilities in our school system. With me tonight is Brent Chamberlain from the Professional Professionals Child, uh, Child Development Associates yeah. here in Pasadena. Uh, on his right is Abigail Clark, a fourth grade student here in Pasadena. And on her right is Laurie Clark, a uh, parent of Abigail. Uh, each of these individuals tonight have had some experience, uh, personal experience, with bullying of students with disabilities in school. Uh, Brand is also a professional in the field of autism, works with the Professional Child Development Associates here in Pasadena. He has a PhD uh, from UCLA and has been a resident of the area for a number of years. So let me start off with you, Brandt. Can you tell us, because you are sort of a, here for two different reasons. You're not only a professional, but you're a parent of the child with disabilities who've had some experiences with bullying in the public school system. So can you start off with giving us maybe two examples of what we should have our listeners understand is bullying? Sure, yeah, as you mentioned, I have two children. Um, they're, they're both uh, grown now, but uh, when they were um, in school, they each had experienced bullying and they had been kind of separated out for different reasons. My, son uh, has high functioning autism he's very verbal but um, at the same time uh, the the condition he's not able to talk about things that were emotionally upsetting so he had been being bullied when he was in about second grade he'd been getting bullied at school for a while and we didn't even know about it because um, he wasn't able to tell us um, we, this was second grade yes this yeah. is not high school no this was this was young um, mm -hmm. but there it does occur more in later mm -hmm. grades but for for him this happened when he was in second grade and um, he was uh, um, I was at the school for an IEP mm -hmm. meeting one day when I noticed that he seemed to be taking too long a time in, in the bathroom and so I went in to check on him and when I went into the bathroom I found that he was standing in a corner cowering while the other children, there were four or five other boys in there that were throwing wet toilet paper at him that they'd picked up from the ground and they were throwing it at him. And when the boys saw me walk in, they all scattered and one of them said, uh, it's not usually me doing this, which wow. was, was hardly reassuring yes. um, to me to hear that. As if, the act, as if the activity was something almost normal. Uh, you're, right, mm -hmm. right, like this was, uh, this was something that had apparently been ongoing mm -hmm. for uh, some period of time mm -hmm. and uh, and the teachers didn't know about it and, you know my son when he saw me he just said thank you mm -hmm. and you know it just it really was kind of heartbreaking um, and when I talked to the teacher she said oh no that that never happened so that's never happened mm -hmm. before well I, you know I think that she hadn't been really aware of what was going on and uh, for my son it was he he would talk about the name of sort of the, the chief ringleader of the of the bullies who you know gotten other kids to 
join up with him in the bullying. And for years afterward, even after we had left that school and were in a different area and had no contact with him, he would bring up this child's name as if he was the incarnation of the devil. It was, you know, evil personified. And it led to a lot of anxiety about him going to school and, and, and uh, being in, in that setting. Now, was this a, an isolated incident? Or were there others during that second grade year or the third grade year? Was there well, what, what we suspect, or I should say what he was able to, it's, uh, years later he was able to talk about it. He couldn't mm -hmm. talk about it at the time. He couldn't tell us what was going on. But um, he was able to tell us years later that that had been an ongoing thing and that this particular boy had been ta um, taunting him in various ways and you know, really become a ringleader getting a bunch of kids mm -hmm. to, um, to uh, tease him and, and to do things like that. Um, but then there was also uh, my daughter um, was, uh, was uh, separated out for different reasons. She, as she got into middle school, um, it was kind of intellectually in a different place from a lot of the kids that, that she was with. She was, uh, she was gifted. And um, the, uh, she had been invited to an overnight a slumber party, a birthday party by her best friend. Um, her supposed best friend, is after she arrived and all the other girls in her class had, had arrived, there were um, 15 girls there or so, and at that point her friend chose to uh, say, oh, I, we don't have room here for you mm -hmm. tonight and you'll have to go home. Mm -hmm. And, and that was, it was only my daughter and it was clearly a, um, uh, actually, it, 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 and my daughter was so upset that even as I was taking her home and I talked to the girl's parents, but um, the, you know, my daughter didn't want anything else to do with the whole situation. Yes, it she, must be very crushing to yeah. be, and because not only was the bullying involved, but this was a betrayal of the loyalty, I imagine, that she yes, felt right. from these other, other exactly. young girls. And it was such a shock, you know, she arrived with her birthday present and, you know, mm -hmm. was all ready to participate mm -hmm. in this slumber party and then to, to have that, it was really a cold, you know, a slap in, in the yeah, face. Yeah, so. Yeah. Lori and Abigail, can you share one or two experiences that uh, you've had in, in school? Mm -hmm. So when I was in <clears throat> first and second grade, I went to school and I was just getting bullied every day. And it was really hard for me to have to go to school and know I was going to get bullied. And so every day I went to school and when it was recess, um, I would just walk around the playground and the, a bunch of kids just kept following me and like saying mean stuff to me like, you're an idiot, you're, why do you, why are you weird? Like, why do you act weird? And um, I just got really upset and this happened all the time at recess and lunch recess. And I would just come home and cry and I had thoughts that I wanted to kill myself and I was just really having a hard time in my first and second grade years with those kids, but now I'm having a great fourth grade year. Okay, well that's good to hear that the, the atmosphere has changed and your life is a lot, a lot more pleasant than it used to be. Yes. Lori, would you like to add anything or, would, or, another, know, I, I or another kind of incident? Sure, I, I think it's hard as a parent when you, um, when you see your child, especially a six or seven year old child, um, and they're, instead of talking about flowers and butterflies, they're talking about how they want to kill themselves, where they want to kill themselves, and what they want to use. Mm -hmm. Um, that they have a plan, a purpose, and, and because they're being harassed at school. Um, she had school refusal, she didn't want to go to school. Um, we would have to, we would get to the school and have the principal and another staff member come out to try and get her out of the car. Um, she's, she would run in front of traffic trying to avoid them. Um, often she wouldn't get dressed, so I'd bring her to school in her pajamas, barefoot, hair not combed, her clothes in a bag so that she can get dressed in the principal's office because she just did not want to go. I think that year we missed 43 days of school. Um, just because of school refusal. Mm -hmm. So we had to, as a, you, you know, we had to come up with a, a way that we could get her to school and safe. Would we drop her off early? Would we come later after school started so that there wasn't as much traffic? Um, okay, now and, this, and it, these problems occurred, if you're, t you're in fourth grade down, occurred yes. maybe two or three <clears throat> years ago, and your problems occurred 20 years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So are we talking about, from your knowledge as parents and you know, in your professional background, and your, 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 uh, chatting with other students are we talking about a problem that just happens once in a while in the school year to maybe a, one individual or two individuals or is it something more more frequent more broad with students with disabilities um, yeah there are estimates that um, from surveys that have been done that anywhere from 
twenty percent, even up to fifty percent of, of students have uh, been victims of bullying. Mm -hmm. um, and in the uh, within the previous twelve months, I think twenty percent was a, a figure. And if you figure that there are also another ten percent mm -hmm. of, of kids who are bullies, mm -hmm. and when you uh, if you figure that's thirty percent, then there's maybe seventy percent of the school population who are the bystanders okay. or um, witnesses, potential witnesses, uh, or we, we hope that they'll become upstanders. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Laurie and Abigail also, do you, do you see other examples of other people being bullied in schools nowadays? I, you hear from other parents, other children? I have seen people get bullied in the past. Mm -hmm. And these are students with disabilities also? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Do you talk, Lori, do you talk with parents? Do they have anything to say, anything to share? Do they ever notice anything from their, from their, from their ch uh, conversation with their children? Sure, and I think that um, it's even things like we had, a, we had a situation with my son, um, who's a kindergartner, and he was on the other end. So with Abby, I was so used to being on the end where I was defending her, she was the victim. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a situation where he was on the playground, um, kindergarten, playing with his friends. Um, they were playing Ninjago or some sort of ninja game and they decided to go chase another student. Well, he didn't know that he was part of the game. So they chased him, they cornered him, there was four against one, they, they surrounded him and then they threw sand on him because the mm -hmm. sand is the magic fairy dust or whatever. Um, but from that standpoint of the other child, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I think that things still go on. I think that a lot of it is education and, and, um, and the school stepping in. Of course, the school stepped in right away and, and and because of what happened with Abby, we addressed it with, you know, with, with Brendan well, as well. Before we get to what the schools can do, should do, and maybe aren't doing, let me ask you one more thing. Here in Pasadena, we have a, I know the school system has something called a CAC. And a, right, an Commu advisor, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, I'm part of that. Yeah. And do you hear from other parents at these meetings that their children with disabilities are also subjects of bullying? Or is it, as I said, is this just a once in a while kind of experience that uh, doesn't happen to very many people? But I mean, do you hear, do you hear money's other parents talking about this? No, I, I, I definitely think that across the district and in other districts, mm -hmm. it's, it's an issue. Um, mm -hmm. I know of other students that it's kind of the same thing. Either they're being picked on, they're being yeah. um, taunted, they're being teased, they're being excluded, mm -hmm. um, they're being told by other kids not to play with them. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I, I definitely think that it's, it's happening. Okay. It's not just an isolated incident. Okay. And from your experience with uh, the Child Development Associates, you, your service area sort of covers San Gabriel Valley, right, right. And which would uh, uh, encompasses several different school districts. Right. Do you hear from parents of, of children with developmental disabilities that there's bullying still going on? Uh, yeah, very, very much so. Mm -hmm. um, we have at, at PCDA, we have a group called the Teen Club, and it is sort of a social group for teens that mm -hmm. are. Um, uh, have uh, social communication challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we've done uh, projects on bullying with the teens, we found that all of the teens in, in that group have experienced some kind mm. of experience that would, uh, that would be in that, in that ballpark, uh, varying degrees of mm -hmm. severity. That's really amazing because, you know, I, I was, I've been a disabled person since age three, and I went through public schools and never experienced any any of these kinds of uh, mm. experiences that you're describing and, and Abigail that you've had. And so I'm wondering, is it because I had a wheelchair mm -hmm. and the people with yeah. wheelchairs and crutches and service animals and white canes, mm. they stand much less chance of being bullied, mm. yes. right? Mm. So it's the people the with yeah. developmental disabilities, yeah. with intellectual disabilities who seem to be odd, stand out and maybe have their... Or the invisible disabilities. Invisible, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's turn to the schools. Well, how did they react when you brought these uh, issues? Of course, you, you said you've learned about yours afterwards, after, most of the after, after time, but that one incident where you were actually present, present and uh, other incidents that you were uh, uh, aware of, how did the school, how did the teacher and the mm -hmm. school administrators react at that time? And uh, same with you, Abigail, if you'd like to add something about how the teacher and school administrators responded when you brought this to their attention. Who would, like, who would like to go first? Sure, we'll start. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we took a tour teacher, <coughs> and mm -hmm. the teacher said that she would talk to the students, and, and we weren't seeing the results that we were looking for. So then from there, we did take it to administration. Mm -hmm. and, and then we started seeing more um, them 
you know, going into the classroom, talking to the students about what bullying, bullying is, um, talking to the whole class, not just the students, but talking to the whole class, okay. pulling the, the individual students out and talking with them and talking with their parents. Um, so, but yeah, we, we did have to, to take it from the teacher to the, to the principal. Did you have to nudge the administration to do this? Or were no, they? the administration was, was great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Brant, in your situation of somewhat 20 years ago? Right, yeah, right. How did these teachers and the school administrators react then? Well, there was this uh, initial uh, denial that there was even uh, a problem, that there was an issue going on. Um, but one of the things, of course, with uh, children with disabilities is that we do have uh, the legal protections, including the IEP, mm -hmm. and uh, for those of uh, viewers who don't know, that stands for uh, the Individualized Education Program, okay. which is a requirement uh, of federal program. law. Mm -hmm. That's right. Federal law, not the ADA. There's other laws that apply to uh, to the actual educational process. Exactly. The ADA applies to schools mostly with the construction and, and building and things like that. So sorry to interrupt, I thought that would be important for our yeah, listeners yeah. to know that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's an individualized plan for each child that includes certain goals and the teachers have to address the goals and they have to report on the progress on the goals uh, at each annual uh, meeting of the IEP. So if you have a goal in there that has to do with addressing the bullying and how the child is, is, um, is interacting in the classroom and mm -hmm. those kind of social goals, um, then that's a way of, of formally drawing everyone's attention to that um, each, each year and every, every time that that child is, um, uh, that the education plan is being okay. addressed. So when you first brought this to the attention of the teacher, did she say, oh, we'll include this in the next IEP right. meeting next year, or? <laughs> yeah, no, no not, okay. not exactly. <laughs> you know, in, in, in school, of course, you always find there's some good teachers that are proactive and they yeah. jump on it, okay. and they're gonna, uh, they're gonna get right on top of it, and then you have other teachers such as, unfortunately, that particular teacher that year, who was in denial and was, uh, you know, resisting even the idea that mm -hmm. any of her students would bully anyone, and so there was a, a, a process of having to bring it to their attention and and uh, make sure that it was addressed. Yeah. So you had to go up up the ladder a bit. Um, well, in that in that particular case, um, it, one of the things about the IEP meeting mm -hmm. is that you always have to have an administrator in the in the meeting. I see. So the it, it, within the team, you have the teacher and the parents, the various therapists, and and an administrator. Mm -hmm. So the administrator w would become aware of it uh, during the IEP meeting, if not okay. if not before. Okay. Was that similar the, the similar process that you and Abigail went through when you first brought it to? The attention of the school authorities that they actually had a, a meeting of, of the teacher, or the administrators, and the two of you, and yeah, was it more informal? We did it more informal. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to the principal, and and um, and I would always leave a paper trail. That's one thing that I've learned is that you you know even if you talk to the teacher face to face, then you go home and you email the teacher and say I just want to you know confirm this is what we talked about. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of what I did is I had the conversation with the principal and and emailed her, and then um, because it went on for. It went on for a little while, over, off and on for probably about three months. Mm -hmm. um, and so every day, it's like I would come home and I would sit down and say, "Okay, what happened at school today?" Because she wouldn't say anything ever at school, even if the principal went up and said, "How's it going? You know, are you having a good day? Is everyone okay?" She would say yes, because she the anxiety she didn't want to um, rock the boat. And so then at home, she would let me know, and I'd email the principal and say, "Okay, this is what happened today." Okay. Now apparently things did get better, and you're in fourth grade now, and you've experienced no bullying for. Two years. Two years, okay. So, how is your <coughs> school life different today than well, it was back then? There's no. I'm not getting bullied anymore, and I'm on student council, and I'm like a big leader of the school. Mm -hmm. And I have a great teacher. I have great friends, and it's just been. A and great I think year. you brought something with you to show us that uh, yes. that uh, indicates where you've gone from being a bullied person to being. A student council officer. An ambassador. Can you come hold that up for the camera to take a look at? And that's a, a sash that you will wear when you're on your official duties at school. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think you're not only an ambassador, but you said you have another uh, position that you hold, right? Athletic and safety commissioner. Athletic and safety commissioner. Okay. And what does that involve? Um, it helps. I mean, it's like you put out the balls and. Um, like take all the playground stuff and put it out for the kids and we do school tours and stuff like that. Okay. And just take care of the playground. Okay. Now that's quite a difference than it was 
from yes. first grade. Mm -hmm. yes. And apparently now you're in a position where you're helping other students. Yes. Okay. And do you ever see any instances of, of other people being bullied for whatever reason? You know, um, not recently this okay. year. All right, okay. So let me talk to about both of you and also you. What are the school systems doing nowadays? Uh, are they doing enough? And what would you suggest they do more? You might want to talk about the Pasadena, uh, the grant and all. Sure. Okay. Um, in October, Pasadena Unified School District received a, um, a two October point of last year? Yes, October okay. of last year. Okay. Um, they received a, a rather large grant. And um, so that's being rolled out in a number of different areas. Um, they have something called an RTI, which is a, a um, it's like a prevention program. So they're trying to be proactive. And where I've really seen PUSD come along is two or three years ago, they were putting out fires. And now then they're really putting in programs to be proactive so that the bullying doesn't happen. They're um, helping the kids take responsibility for their own actions. So if they, um, if there's a situation, um, then they, the teachers or, or principal would sit down with them and say, okay, let's fill this paper out. Um, you know, what part of the situation were you involved with? What could you have done differently? Um, and so they're really having the kids take leadership and take ownership over what's happening in the school. And it's really changed the whole school climate um, tremendously. Okay. Uh, Brad, how about you from your yeah. professional work? Well, I think changing the climate is yeah. such a, a big thing. You have to look at change, uh, 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 increasing the sensitivity of parents, teachers, students, really everyone involved, the office staff, the bus drivers, uh, everyone needs to be in involved okay. in order to change the So climate. we're talking about sort of training of everybody? That's uh, right, okay. that's right. And it, it and takes leadership at, yeah. the, at the top levels. Okay. And how, do, how, how would schools go about doing that kind of training? Is there a consultant someplace that they, they hire, or is there something that they can be doing themselves in terms of uh, doing their own programs? Uh, well, we, we are available for consultation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I had uh, mm -hmm. one student who was in middle school mm -hmm. and was uh, being taunted by a, mm -hmm. a group of, it started out as just mm -hmm. one girl, and then she got friends involved, and then there were a bunch mm -hmm. of folks that were um, teasing. Uh, this particular child, and we showed a film called Intricate Minds to the um, to the kids in the class, and this was there was a sympathetic teacher who uh, allowed us to r have a discussion with the kids and talked about the special abilities of folks with. In that case, that was about Asperger's syndrome, and then we talked about how um, uh, what types of special abilities they have, and then the students got interested in the young man that I was working with was uh, talented at drawings and enjoyed mm -hmm. doing that. They got interested in his drawings and they began to see him as a person. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also things that can be done on a, a school-wide basis. Um, for example, there's a, a, a technique called relationship mapping. And what that involves is um, getting all the teachers in the school together and they'll put up on the on the wall a list of all the students names mm -hmm. and then each teacher has a roll of colored dots and they'll go and they'll put a colored dot next mm -hmm. to the name of any of any of the children that they feel that they have a positive relationship with I see. and so then at the end you can look at the list and it becomes very clear which stu the students that have lots of dots and which are being isolated uh, yes right uh, and which, which ones are don't. isolated exactly yeah. and of course the ones with a lot of dots tend to be the more outgoing ones mm -hmm. and the ones with uh, very few dots may be the ones that the, t uh, that the staff really need to start mm -hmm. paying more attention to um, building a relationship directly with those students and then also helping them build relationships with other students mm -hmm. as well um, Another thing that schools can do is uh, assessment, and I understand this is something that Pasadena mm -hmm. has been doing, um, is a survey mm -hmm. of everyone in the community. So you're not just surveying the, the um, parents or not just surveying the teachers, but all the students and the, the teachers and the parents as well each year about all aspects of the uh, climate. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's good to know that there are things that school systems can do and apparently are doing, at least mm -hmm. Among uh, within our area here, yeah. so if it's happening in in other areas of Los Angeles County and around the country, uh, we're well, getting, there is one yeah. other thing mm -hmm. too, which is the notion of restorative justice. Restorative justice. Yeah. Okay. So whereas in the past, oftentimes it had all been about um, uh, suspending a child right. or, or uh, those kinds of uh, mm -hmm. punitive approaches, in a restorative mm -hmm. justice situation, and it wouldn't apply to every situation. It's a it, it would only you know so uh, particular situations, but um, it would involve bringing together the uh, perpetrator, the bully, and the, and the victim together with their 
parents, with the teachers, with everyone that's involved in the situation, talking it out and coming up with a creative solution about what can make the situation better. Mm -hmm. So it, there have been examples. Now that's taking the concept of inclusion to a yeah, right. very well, interesting yeah. dimension and apparently a very effective one, I the, think. Well, there are examples, for example, if a, a, a bully had wrecked a, a child's bike, mm -hmm. then the, the bully might be involved in helping to repair that bike, mm -hmm. that type of, of okay. thing. Okay, very good. We're getting close to the end of our time here. There's never enough time to, to really explore a, an important subject like this. But let's end with what advice you might give to parents of young children who have developmental disabilities. What should they be on the lookout for? What they, and is there any way that they can prepare their children to deal with bullying? Would you like to? Sure. Um, um, things to be on the lookout for would be like school mm -hmm. refusal, not wanting to, you know, not wanting to go to school, mm -hmm. um, just having really strong feelings and emotions mm -hmm. about it. Um, and, and as far as preparing them, it, you know, I think it's just things of, um, to talk about what a good friend is and, what a, and someone that's not a good friend. Um, we did that a little bit with Abby um, so that, to help her, because you know, sometimes some girls should be like, oh yeah, this is my friend, and then the next day the, it should be really mean to her. And so we'd so say, maybe okay. that's one of the keys to avoiding bullying is to have friends. Right. Because it's the, the person bullied is always the victim who's isolated and right. an easy target. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I like what you said earlier about um, paper trail. Yes. When an incident does come up, make sure that you you follow up with the emails that just to confirm a conversation, mm -hmm. because those that uh, documentation may be helpful, and, and even critical in the future. Definitely. Okay. We have one minute left, and Abigail, what would you say to a person in second grade who is bullying another student with a disability? Which, um, what's it, what should that person, what would you like to tell that person? I would ask them if they could stop and maybe go tell a teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stop. Just stop it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you, what would you tell to, if you had a, if you were brought face to face with the person who bullied your child years ago or, or right. a bully currently? Well, well, I understand that one of the things at Pasadena that's going on are these student uh, safe school ambassadors. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to have a peer program, because peers can have an influence oh, okay. on helping things to stop. So if you're not tattling, but to have confidential ways to report. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if, if there's a peer group that's involved that can actually help intervene and help stand with the students that are being bullied, to, to decrease that isolation. Okay. And Pasadena does have an anonymous tip line. PUSD has a tip line. It's 888-777. And you can send an anonymous text and it will go directly to the school district. Okay. All very good advice. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all for being with us and with our viewers on this program. We have a very important conversation that we've had. And I want to thank the viewers for listening. And keep in mind uh, some of the things that you've learned. Uh, they're very valuable, maybe not only for your life, but the life of family members, colleagues, friends in your neighborhood. Be on the, watch, uh, be on the lookout for bullying. It is a violation of, of a person's human rights, even though it may be occurring among people who are only six and seven or eight years old. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>